So now let me also say this about the um, about motion too, um, as we're as we're learning how to export today. One of my biggest frustrations, and I mean, like this is humongous for me as far as Final Cut Pro 10 is concerned, is your inability to uh, load a, a motion composition um, into Final Cut Pro without having to render it out. Um, you used to be able to actually import motion project files, the .motn files, and you and just bring them right into Final Cut Pro and drop them on the timeline just like any old video clip. Uh, and you can do that with Adobe Premiere and After Effects. You can load an After Effects comp into uh, <coughs> Adobe Premiere and you can trim it, cut it, make slow-mo, you can throw color balance filters on it, you can throw all sorts, I mean it's basically just a video clip to, to the computer or to the program, which is really cool. So I'm very, very disappointed with Final Cut Pro as far as this is concerned. Um, <coughs> this is actually one of my biggest disappointments with Final Cut Pro, probably my second biggest disappointment with them. Um, I, I, I cannot believe that they built software that is this much worse than what they used to have, but that's what they did. Um, and something like this, I just it doesn't make sense why you wouldn't want it. But anyway, <clears throat> so we've got our, 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 our green screen comp here. Um, <clears throat> so I've got our, I've got our uh, security guard there and he's now directing in the, the traffic. Okay, <clears throat> looks good. So now what we're going to do is I want to, let's say I want to bring that into a Final Cut Pro uh, edit or something like that, or I want to submit it as a final project for my teacher to grade. Um, you cannot just give me the .motn file. Um, and the reason for that is because I won't have your source clips. Your source clips that you're using to create your comp uh, you have to be in the same location. So when you copy it to the Project Tandem folder and then I copy it onto a, an SD card or a hard drive or my laptop and then I take it home to grade, I can't see anything. Um, and when you move your source files, it just comes up as big red checkers in motion. So it does not help me in any way, shape or form. I've got to have a rendered final movie. Um, and that's the case with your Final Cut Pro stuff too. You've got to make sure you render out a final movie for me to see. So here's how we do it in motion. Um, <clears throat> again, the export thing is gone. It's under share, which is really frustrating. Um, <clears throat> but it's under share, export movie. Okay, we're not going to go to devices. We're going to export movie. I don't even know why they have Blu-ray up here because Apple never put Blu-ray burners in their computers. You have to buy one separately all the time. So we're just going to go export movie and then uh, it's going to pop up a window. And one of the things that's important is you can just hit export same as source, but I, you know, you don't know what the source files were. Um, it depends on the, um, it depends on the uh, original files and especially in motion when you're bringing multiple sources together. So for your green screen projects, uh, some of you have 720p sources and 480p sources or 720p sources and 1080p sources and all that sort of stuff. So I think in that case, it's actually really important to kind of choose your own thing. Um, <clears throat> so what I'll do is I will always choose ProRes for in, in a, on a Mac. I'll choose Apple ProRes 422 high quality. And the reason why I choose that is that's what is native for Final Cut Pro. Um, <clears throat> on a PC, you, well, you wouldn't be using motion on a PC anyway, so it doesn't matter. <clears throat> but on, on, a, on a PC, you have some more options because of the way Adobe Premiere might work if you were working in After Effects. But on a Mac, it's ProRes 422 basically is the way to go. I mean, you could use H.264, but honestly, ProRes is the easiest, the fastest, and the, the one that, that uh, Final Cut Pro loves to, to do. Um, <clears throat> you don't need to open it, really. Um, include video and audio, that depends on your project. <clears throat> when you go to this, it's, you know, all this is pretty much the same. Um, <clears throat> although it probably isn't a bad idea to say render quality best, um, <clears throat> that sort of thing. Um, and then we didn't use cameras or anything like that, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, <clears throat> and then it will just kind of tell you a general summary here. It will give you an estimated size for the file, which is nice. Um, and it gives you your, your, your uh, source clip 
or not your source clip, but your, your ending video clip statistics here. ProRes 422, 1920 by 1080. So in this case, I was shooting at 1080. I think for everybody, because you guys will be using, you, you were using videos uh, that were all, oh, most of them were at 720p. Um, <clears throat> so this should say 1280 by 720, and your frame rate should probably be 2997. Okay, but it takes these two things from your, your project settings. So if these are wrong, if something's not right here with your width, height, and frame rate, that's not the export option. That's not the problem here. The problem, that is a problem in your project settings and that's something you need to change in the project settings. So you could go, let's just hit cancel. You could go to um, <coughs> project properties, okay? And then here's your project properties here. And here's where you set all that stuff up uh, and should have basically been set up when you brought your, your video file in. A word of caution, if you start changing this now after you've finished your comp, you could really screw things up too. So be careful about that. If you have any questions, call me over so that you really know what you're doing. Um, I, don't, I don't think, um, yeah, I, I, I don't think it'd be a wise idea if you were to start playing with that without my help unless you really know what you're doing. Okay, so we're just going to go back to this, share, export movie, there we go. Um, <clears throat> So I'm going to choose ProRes 422. Everything else is good. Um, and I'm going to take my render quality to best. And uh, you can even go custom, and it will open up a whole other thing here, and you can play with all that if you want to. But I would just set it to best. That's the best thing right there. <clears throat> and uh, don't change any of the other settings. You should be good to go. And you can scrub through your project here, which is pretty cool. Uh, that's a nice thing about this, is you can kind of just make sure that it's showing everything that you think it should. And then you hit Next. <clears throat> and what it's going to do is it's going to ask you where to save it. Um, I recommend you put it in your Movies folder for the time being. And then you'll copy it over to the Project hand and folder. <clears throat> now you just have to sit and wait. When you set the render quality to best and, the, and it to ProRes 422 high quality, it takes a decent amount of time to render. Now these are pretty fast computers, but this clip is only 15 seconds long. Um, you know, it's going to take a good 60 seconds or more to render it out. Um, that's actually not too shabby, but if you've got a lot of layers, like Mark's sumo thing where he's got 10, 15 layers going on at once there, um, that's going to take a little longer to render out. Now what I recommend you do, oh, <clears throat> I forgot to tell it not to do anything, but then it will, it will open it in, in um, <clears throat> I still forgot to fix that problem there. Um, <clears throat> it will open it in, uh, in QuickTime <clears throat> and you can preview your, um, you can preview your, uh, your clip, make sure that everything works fine, make sure that everything looks the way you've expected it to, and then you need to put it in the hand and folder, okay? And you can quit, and then you can quit motion as well. Does that, does that make sense to everybody? I mean, it's a pretty, pretty simple process, but the tricks there are make sure you set the render quality to best, and you have it set to uh, QuickTime, or uh, not QuickTime, ProRes 422 uh, for, the, uh, for the format.